Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us for, for Sunday School this morning, both in person and online. What is our Sunday School lesson title today, Sister Davis? Salvation for all who believe. Salvation for all who believe. The uh, idea here is to let everybody know that salvation is for everybody. Amen? Amen. Salvation is for everybody. Salvation is for everybody. What is what is salvation? What is salvation? What is salvation? What do you think salvation is? Have you thought about what salvation is? Does salvation exist? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. The mission so, of the Lord is saved in Jesus Christ that he died for us who rose and Okay, so believing in the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ that he was buried and rose again. You want to say something, sir? We're not alive? All right. Yes, you are. We're alive now. Let's see here. Okay, yes, it's a little delay. Okay, so salvation. Salvation is what we're looking forward to for all, right? I see you, Sister Young. I see. It shows you this. Okay, so salvation is for everybody, correct? Salvation, God does not discriminate uh, against anyone. Salvation is for everybody. Salvation is for everybody. I wanna see Sister Diane Henry on. I do show. Okay, now I see Carolyn Wheeler. Okay, so salvation is for everybody. The lesson says that salvation is for everybody. How do you say salvation in Spanish? How do you say salvation? In Spanish, salvation is for everybody. Deliverance. Salvation. Say again. Salvation. Salvation. Salvation is for everyone. Salvation. Salvation is for everyone. Salvation is for everyone. So today we're looking at Romans uh, chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17 is where we are today. Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Brother Miles, will you? Read the keep in mind for us, then Sister Henry will you read the name for, for change. Keep in mind, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10 and 13. Romans 10 and 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sister Henry. Aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will explain Paul's confidence in the salvation offered in Christ, feel justified through our faith in Christ, and embrace with joy the possibility for all. Amen. And right, Sister Davis, will you read the story for us, please? The In Focus. For three months, Kathy had been looking for work. She prayed that the Lord would give her a job where she would have the opportunity to share the gospel with her fellow workers. Kathy was a trained and certified accountant, but no doors were opening for her. One morning, Kathy received a call from a local rehabilitation center that had gotten her name from a former employee. The center was hiring, but not in the accounting department. The personnel director was so impressed by Kathy's work ethics and resume, he asked Kathy if she would be interested in training men and women who had been just released from prison so they might successfully return to society and work. She asked for a week to consider. Kathy continued looking for employment in her field, but nothing materialized. After several sleepless nights, Kathy wondered if this assignment was an answer to her prayer. She decided to step out on faith and take the position. Within the first month, Kathy, God gave Kathy favor with her supervisor so that she could start a weekly Bible study. More than 75% of the patients attended and Kathy was able to lead many of them to Christ. Nearly everyone Kathy trained was successful in finding good paying jobs and becoming witnesses for Christ where they worked. How has God shown you unexpected ways to make a path to share the gospel with those around you? Okay, thank you. Okay, tell us in, in your own words about Kathy and, and Kathy's situation. 
uh, she had been looking for a work. She was an accountant, and she had been praying to God to send her a job uh, where she could share Christ, but nothing had opened up, and then uh, one day she got a call. This center was hiring, and uh, the lady was impressed with Kathy's work ethics and her resume, so she asked Kathy if she could train men and women who had just been released from prison. And so Kathy accepted the job after a week. She figured that this, maybe this is what the Lord was asking her and leading her to do. And then within the month, uh, she was able to start a prayer group, Bible study group, where she uh, taught Jesus and 75% of the patients attended. They, she was able to lead them to Christ. So she, she, her prayer was answered. Okay. So when we pray, first of all, we have to be specific, right? Yeah. Right? What was, what was Kathy's prayer? For a job. What other prayer did she call upon God for in her prayer time? What else did she want from God? The opportunity to share the gospel. The opportunity to share the gospel. So she wanted a job. She wanted an opportunity to share the gospel. Did she want a job in accounting? Yes. She wanted one in accounting, right? But did she get one in accounting? No. Why did God ask a piece of this girl's prayer? <laughs> or did he ask a piece of it? He did ask a piece of it or all of it? I think he answered it all. He answered it all, okay. How, how do you say? Because even though it, it, it wasn't for sake an accountant, but it was in delivering the message and it was something that would be uh, accountable to her as well, or she was doing something because she was, all, she was a trained person, mm -hmm. so she could train other people in the field that needed to be there. Okay, so so she did get a job, and when she get a job, that means she makes money, right? Right. And so she gets paid to do a job, but at the same time, she has the opportunity to share Christ. How many of us pray for the opportunity to share Jesus Christ, or do we pray? Sometime, one or two, okay. So we, we pray for the opportunity to share Christ. So we ought to be praying for the opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Right? So let's begin praying. Lord, give us the opportunity to share Christ. Now, if you're praying for the opportunity to share Christ, that means you have to be prepared to share Christ. So everybody at the New Beginning Church is prepared to share Christ, correct? Amen. Everybody has been indoctrinated into sharing Christ at the New Beginning Church. So we are prepared to share him. What will we share? What will we talk about? How will we do it? The gospel. We'll talk about the gospel. So say what? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, is our testimony discounted? Our personal testimony. Is it, is it to no effect? Is it not what we ought to... Is it discounted? Yes, ma'am. I think the testimony is discounted. I can't hear you. I think our testimony is what we should be sharing. Our testimony is what we should be sharing. Where we have come from. Well, me for all speak for myself. Okay, so when we're sharing the gospel, we're sharing Jesus' story, right? We're sharing Jesus' testimony. When we share our testimony, we're sharing what Jesus has done through us and for us, right? So remember, your testimony is good. Your testimony is needed. But it's only Jesus' story that saves. Okay? So yeah, we want to share our testimony, we want to share what God has done for us, but we have to always be mindful to note that God has only done these things for us because of what Jesus has done. His death, burial, and resurrection. Because without Jesus, we are nothing but filthy, filthy rags. Our righteousness, and that's what the Sunday School lesson talks about, our righteousness is nothing. Our righteousness won't get us saved. Our works will not get us what we need. It's truly, truly Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection that saves us. And that's it, right? So oftentimes in classes that I'm teaching, I say, um, if you have not been saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have not been saved, and I oftentimes get challenged. Why do I get challenged to that? Why do people think other ways? Why is that not a true statement for most people? And I do say most. 
Why do you think people challenge that? What is death, burial, and resurrection? Why do they challenge uh, the way I believe that salvation comes? Because they've been taught other ways in other churches by other people, including some preachers, right? right. They've been taught that you must speak in tongues. Is that right? Mm -hmm. They've been taught that you must roll on the floor. They've been taught you must call on Mother Mary. They've been taught that you must pray the rosary. What are some of the rest of them you've been taught, Brother Miles? Oh, okay, I just checked. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else have been taught any way to salvation? Sister Brown, any way to salvation that you've been taught other than the death, burial, and resurrection? There are some who teach <coughs> that you must be baptized. Must be baptized. You must be baptized. There are some who teach that you must be baptized. What's wrong with baptism? Nothing. Nothing? So why can't we be saved through baptism? It's hmm? it's okay. Baptism is an outward show, an outward demonstration of what's happened within us. So it's, it, as the text we'll talk about today, it's all about our hearts. It's all about our inward being. And then once our hearts are changed, we tell people through confession. Let's look at this. Y'all want me to read or y'all want to read loud enough for everybody here? Okay, Sister David, we'll start with you. Give me the first three verses, please, and then everybody else can follow. Romans 10 and 5. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Okay, next. Anybody, anybody. But what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, in thy heart. That is the work of faith which we preach. Okay. So, so soon. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised, hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay. Sister Woods. Verse 11. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay. Sister Brown. Verse 13. For whoever shall whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they shall they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without the preaching? Okay, Sister Urban. And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they are, have not our, our obeyed the gospel. But Messiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. So let's look at look at what Paul says here. He he first of all compares righteous works, doing good, good things to faith. When I say compare, he really contrasts this. In other words, they are different. They are opposite. For years and years, the Jews believed that they were the righteous ones. They believed that no one could know God but them. And we have denominations today who believe that they are the righteous ones. And they believe that no one can get to know God but them like they know him. And we have even people in our faith, our denomination, who believe that children are not ready to be baptized because they don't know God on the level in which the parents know them. 
So we miss out on a great opportunity to witness to young people and then to get them to the water to be baptized because we've come up with something in our minds that we believe that been passed from one generation to the other. Let me just say to you, a child has to believe on a child's level. And as long as he or she believes on a child's level and they believe the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, believing that he's the son of God, believing that story is the only thing that can get them to heaven or her to heaven, then they're saved. Amen? Amen. So let's look at it. He says, for, for Christ has righteousness. Verse 4, he talks about Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone who believes. The law was set there for man to follow. But let me tell you a secret. Man could not follow it. Men in those days couldn't follow it. And guess what? Men in these days couldn't follow it and cannot follow it. Our righteousness can't save us. What we do, what we do, the way we handle things, as good as we are, it cannot save us. What are some of the good things that we do in life? What are some of the good Christian things we do? Name some good Christian things we do. We visit the sick. We visit the sick. Anything else? Feed we feed the hungry. Pay tithes. We give tithes and offerings. Anything else? What are some of the good things we do? Good things. I mean, they're, they're really good. Yes, sir. We go to church. We go to church. That's a good thing. Any other good thing we do? So, sir. We use the gifts that God has given us. Anybody else? We love one another. We love one another. We love being around each other. We, we get joy out of celebrating each other. Anybody else? What are some of the good things you do, Deacon Alfred? Share my gifts with others. Share your goods with others. Sister Paul, anything that's good you're doing these days? What are some of the good things you do? Helping others. Helping others. Cassandra, what good you doing these days? What you on planet Earth doing good with? Huh? <laughs> you doing any good these days? Got my family. Uh, okay, what else? What are you doing other than what Sister Dave is telling you you're doing? Read the Bible. Reading the Bible. Good one. Okay, so all these things that we've named, we do good. Is any of are any of these things, are any of these things good enough to save us? No. Well, you all were shaking your head before I even asked the question. Why aren't any of these things good enough to save us? Only God, can save us? Only God can save us. Our works can't save us. Our deeds can't save us. Where we go, who we with, who we hang out with, those things cannot save us. But the things that you name, are those good things to do? Yes. Are they? Yes. So why do we do these things if they can't save us? Because we are saved. So we do them because we're saved, right? We don't do them to get saved. We do them because we're saved. So in other words, because we're saved, we ought to do these things. We ought to do these things. We ought to treat people right. We ought to take care of our families. We ought to go to church. We ought to feed the, the hungry. We ought to clothe the naked. We ought to give tithes and offerings because we are saved. So let's look at verse number five. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth, the word here is doeth, doeth the, those things shall live by them. So Moses had this book of law. We know that Moses is credited for the first five books of the Bible called the Pentateuch. He's credited for the first five books of the Bible. And in those books, there are laws, and men could not keep them, and many of them lost their lives. There are laws, and the law is nothing but a schoolmaster that keeps telling us over and over again what to do. 
Keep telling us, gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. When I think of the law, I think about mom and dad. The only difference in the law and mom and daddy, they didn't tell us over and over and over again. They said it, and that was the law. One of the biggest disappointments I thought in my life was I had, I had pre-registered, it's called delayed entry for the United States Air Force. I could even picture myself in the uniform. I could picture myself saluting. I could picture myself walking uh, next, next to caskets of those who have, have died in war. I could picture myself learning electronics and going on to be an electrical engineer. And I was so excited in the 11th grade. Daddy, I have signed up for the United States uh, Air Force and I'm on a delayed entry plan. Daddy said, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> And guess what? There was no more discussion. And because I was on the delayed entry plan, I could get out of it. But guess what? He said it one time. And there was no more discussion. Matter of fact, my dreams became something else. That's how the law was. The law, the law was a schoolmaster, a taskmaster, a parent that would speak and you had to do it. Moses outlined these laws and said, those who do them live by them. In other words, those who didn't do them didn't live at all. The taskmaster. You remember telling your children what to do? And you said, this is my last time? When the law told them what to do and the law said it was their last time, the next time they did it, they died. So men could not keep the law. Verse number five says, Moses describes this as righteousness as they kept the law. But they couldn't do it. It was, it was so much pressure. It was so much stuff to keep in mind. You read the book of Leviticus and see how many of those we abandoned every day. You, do, you read the book of Deuteronomy and see how many times we mess up every day. The law we can't keep. But when you kept it, it was considered righteousness. Verse number six. But the righteousness which, he, which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. What I'm saying to you is you don't have to leave earth to go to heaven to be saved. And you don't have to bring Christ down from heaven to be saved. Neither do you have to go down into the earth where Christ was died in order to be saved. That makes sense to you? We have learned that Christ comes back to get us. We have learned if we believe that Christ left heaven, if we believe that Christ died, if we believe that Christ was resurrected, then we don't have to do these things. And we are saved. Questions or comments? We, we must believe the story. But the righteousness which is of faith, this is a faith righteousness. It's not a works righteousness. I went to visit a preacher that I grew up with and, and, and he's He's of a different type of uh, denomination. And he wanted to make sure that, that, that people knew that once they sin, there's no forgiveness. I don't know which book he was reading, but it wasn't the Bible. And he's pastoring. And he's got a grove of folk. And he talks about certain sins. If you commit them, you can't be delivered from them. But I notice it's only the sins that he's not guilty of. So he's, he's stuck in this paradigm of righteousness coming by way of what we do. Now, if, if we are not saved by righteous deeds, should we just walk around and do any and everything? If we saved anyway, Sister Brown, why we just can't do it, do things our way? 
So Sir Urban, why don't we, why don't we just, just go ballistic and do whatever we want to do? No? Do you, do you allow the word of God to, to tailor make your life? To hold you in check? I'm not talking about when you get too old to do it. I'm not talking about that. I'm not, I'm not talking about I would have still been doing this, but I just got too old to do it. I'm talking about the word of God, the Holy Spirit holding your reins. Yes, ma'am. I'm not trying to be biblical per se, but the Bible tells us that the any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Okay. The old things have passed away, and all, all things have become new. So you want to change your old way of living and, and base your living on the word of God right. so that he can lead you, because he will guide, uh, that the Holy Spirit guide your path you know, okay. so you can go right and do the right thing. So once we're saved, once we're born again, once we have acknowledged Christ sonhood, death, bearing, resurrection, trust this story to get to heaven, our lives ought to change. We ought to be different. Should we be perfect as we know perfect? No. The Bible says we should be perfect as he is perfect, right? Yeah. But that's a gradual process. Oh, so it's a gradual process. It's a, it, God is still working on us. God, we're still under construction. But we walk by faith. The text declares, is that verse number nine, the text declares that this is a faith walk. And because it is a faith walk, then we get to verse number nine. It says to us that if verse eight says it's a word is of the word of faith, which we preach. This word preach is corusion, which actually means the preacher is preaching. Corusion. And so in other words, it's a man that's called to preach. After we do our word study and further evaluate it, we know that it is the, the preacher that's preaching, okay? So Paul has said, this is what we preach. He says, we preach these things, and these things are things of faith. It is, these are things of faith. We walk by faith. We live by faith. We act on faith. We request God with faith, for faith. We read the word so we can gain more faith. It's a faith walk. It's not a, a working walk. It's a faith walk. It's not a doing walk. It's a faith walk. We walk by faith. What is faith? 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 Anybody want to tell me? Okay, so of things hold for, evidence of things not seen, Sister Brown. What is faith? Okay, so what do I tell the person that's listening to us that's not in church? Loyal. Who's talking? I said it's loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty. So faith. Okay, now I'm not talking about being faithful. I'm not, loyalty is being faithful. What is faith itself? What is belief? Belief. Anybody else? I can't hear you. Having complete trust. Having complete trust. trust. Having complete trust. So we walk by trust. We walk by faith. We walk by what we believe. We act on what we believe. We carry ourselves because we believe. The way we carry ourselves is because of what we believe. Let's look at verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart, thine heart that God has raised him. Who? Raised who? Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Key verses here, verses 9 and 10, and even number 11. These are very, very key verses. Number one, if you confess, this word confess means to give a testimony. This word confess means to give a report. This word confess is the word that Sister Brown was talking about. That means that we have to tell folk what God has done. But we must remember that we are only telling them what Jesus has done on Calvary. Look at what it says. That if thou shalt confess, shall speak, shall open your mouth and tell people, shall, shall have a testimony. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, 
the Lord Jesus here is that he's the son of God. When you look at the word, the words, Lord Jesus, you will find out that he is the son of God. So you are confessing with your mouth that Jesus exists, that Jesus is the son of God. He is God's only begotten son. What is that word in the Greek, begotten? Only begotten son. Unique. Only unique son. He is God's only unique son. He is the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Is it talking about believing in that muscle in your chest? In your chest cavity? No? What does he mean when he says believe in your heart? What is he talking about? Believe in your heart. If thou shalt believe in thy heart that the innermost part of your being, what turns you, what makes you, your innermost uh, belief. If you believe in your heart, God has raised Jesus from the dead Thou shalt be saved. So if he's going to raise him from the dead, what does that say? He died. If he's going to raise him from the dead, not only did he die, he was buried. So you believe, first of all, he's the son of God, the Lord Jesus. Secondly, you believe that he died for your sins. Thirdly, you believe that they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And fourthly, you, you believe that he was raised from the dead. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, that men saw him after he, was, he had risen from the dead. Is that hard to believe? Is that too much to believe? In the natural man. In the natural man, you, you struggle with that? You know, in the natural man, somebody being raised from oh, the dead. Oh, somebody else struggled with that. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you struggle in the natural, man. That's a human thing. So from a human perspective, we may struggle, and many, many do, may struggle with the thought that a man named Jesus even lived. And they want to say there were a lot of people named Jesus. And that's correct. There were a lot of people named Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, it is clear that he is God's only begotten son, only unique son, only one of a kind son, Jesus. Now, no one else can fit that bill. His name is Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's so simple. We make it so hard. It's so simple. We start talking about, well, I ain't ready for that preacher. I'm not ready to stop doing what I'm doing. But Sister Henry, Brother Miles says, we don't stop doing it in order to be saved. We stop doing it because we are saved. You want to tell us, Sister Brown, what you stop them now? We stop doing stuff because we are saved. We stop doing stuff because we are saved. So we go from salvation to sanctification. This word salvation means deliverance. And when we look at it in this context, it means deliverance from our sin. God saved us. Hallelujah. Boy, I used to love to quote what the sanctified church back home would say. I'm saved, sanctified, and woo, filled with his precious Holy Ghost. And you have to get excited right around there when you get to the Holy Ghost. Saved, sanctified. What's the difference in the two? Saved and sanctified. Anybody? What's the difference in being saved and being sanctified? Saved is that which you have up to believe in the Lord and Savior. Sanctification is you being set apart. Okay, so so we are saved when we've been delivered, and sanctification is when we live that live out that salvation and then we're set apart. We're different. How many of you have gone back home and they say it's something different about you? How many of you going back into the neighborhood or friends you used to hang out with and they said, it's something different about you? No, they didn't say that yet. <laughs> what? A long time. My mama. So your sanctification shows 
what has transpired on the inside. Look at verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man has faith. With the heart man believes. With the heart he believes. Not with the works, but with the heart. It's the innermost going on. It's the carrying on on the inside of you. It's on the inside of you. Your heart. And let me tell you, as you have just said, what goes on in your heart is delivered on the outside of you. It's a heart issue. When you see people doing the crazy, they got bad hearts. When you see people just acting plum fools, as they would say back home, I just acting a plum fool. I mean, they just acting plum fools. It's a heart problem. And if you are saved, you ought not have plum fool mentality. We all got our personalities. We all got our little quirks. We all got our problems. But the fact of the matter is your personality ought to be driven by your heart and your, well, it is driven by your heart, but it all be driven by your Christian heart. So for with the heart, we believe unto righteousness. We are set as right. We are not right. We are, we are, we have righteousness imputed in us. It takes place in us. Righteousness become a part of us. And it was done through Jesus Christ. Question or comments? So it, it, we believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth we confess unto salvation. We have to tell somebody. So Sister Brown said we need to tell them. We have to tell somebody that we're saved. We have to tell somebody the way we got saved is that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and we believe that story, and that's why we're saved. We confess it. We tell it. We speak it. We talk about it unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believe, verse number, number 11, for the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You ought not be ashamed that you're saved. You ought not be ashamed to talk about being saved. You ought not be ashamed to live a saved life. And when I talk about living a saved life, I'm not talking about wearing your dresses below your knees make you righteous. I mean, it may not be a bad thing to wear your dress below your knees. But that alone does not make you righteous. Matter of fact, wearing makeup or a lack of wearing makeup does not make you righteous. Speaking in tongues does not make you righteous. Baptism doesn't make you righteous. It's on Jesus, Jesus alone, that makes us righteous. He is the one that imputes righteousness in us. And because we are righteous, we ought not be ashamed. Paul says in Romans 1.16 that I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. We ought to make sure that we understand very well that it is God that makes us righteous. Questions, comments? Verses 12 through 17, when we look at verse 12, for there is no difference between Jew and Greek in the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Remember now the Jews thought they had a, a carte blanche on salvation. Matter of fact, they thought they had a privilege that no one else had on God or with God. It's just like us in the world today. Our religions, and, and then there are some people, individuals, who think they got it going on. And it is, it, it is this person that looks down his or her nose at people who dress that not like them. Or people who doesn't have facility of showers like they have. Or people who don't, don't act and speak like they speak. We've gotten so holy until we're no earthly good. So, so he says, we should not be ashamed, and we need to understand that there's no difference between us and them. Matter of fact, it's just us, it's no them. There's no difference. Because if we call upon the name of the Lord, we all can be saved. We all can be saved. 
we can all be saved. We ought to be willing to call upon the name of the Lord that we will be saved. How then shall we call upon whom we have not heard, have not believed? And how shall we and how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? Or how shall they hear without a preacher? This word preacher is the one who heralds the word of God. The one who proclaims the word of God. The one who is called by the word of God. Let's look at the next verse. It says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? These guys are not those who went. They were sent. How can we hear without a preacher? How can they preach unless they are sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. What are these glad tidings that they're talking about? What do you think these glad tidings are? Bring these glad tidings. What is these glad tidings of good things? Who's talking? What is glad tidings? Who's talking? The things that Jesus has Okay, so these glad tidings is the fact that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is able to save us. It is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that has saved me. And as we get toward the last two verses, we will see that we ought to have a report. We ought to have a testimony. These are glad tidings of, of, of the gospel of peace that brings glad tidings of good things. How many people know that in the world today we need some good things? Some good. We need something good. Y'all think we need some good things? Right now or tomorrow? Right now. right now we need some good things. As of yesterday. We need some good things. We need some good news. Anytime. Let's just not even think about the criminals right now if we can't. If we can. Not even to think about the criminals. Over 600,000 people have died from one disease. We need some good news. And the good news is, even in the midst of their dying, we ought to lead them to Christ and tell them about these good things. Some good things. We ought to, we ought to be willing to talk to them about good things. Are you with me? We got to be willing to talk about good things. I mean, the whole family is being wiped out. They, they, they may have, have not had any medical issues, but whole families being wiped out within weeks of each other. Whole families. No beneficiaries left. Whole families. We need some good things. We need some glad tidings. We need some good things. We need good things. Glad tidings is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to repeat the word over and over again. We need to live the word before people over and over again. Verses 16 and 17. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For he says, he says is Isaiah. Isaiah 53 and 1 is what uh, Paul is quoting here. Says, Lord, who shall believe our report? Who shall believe our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. If your faith is going to grow, you got to hear the word of God. If your faith is going to increase, you're going to have to hear the word of God. That's why we're listening through the Bible every day on. We sit, clap one time. Don't, just, just clap. Just clap. We're listening to the Bible every day. We're journaling through the Bible every day. We are, we are reading the Bible in our daily reading every day because this word increases our faith. The text declares that salvation is issued to everybody. It's not just to the Jew. It's now to the Greek. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? So where do we stand if we're not called to preach? We are called to give what is known here as a report. <laughs> In the report, you outline what happened. In the report, you talk about how it happened. 
In a report, you identify every character. If a police officer writes up a report, he identifies every character on the scene, he identifies what happens, and he identifies the results of what went on. Let me tell you, when you witness for Jesus Christ, you talk about Jesus being the person. You talk about what Jesus has done, death, burial, and resurrection. And you talk about the impact that his death, burial, and resurrection has had upon my life. And that's when you give the report, and that's how you give the testimony. And my life have been renewed ever since. My life has been made the better ever since. Questions or comments? Anybody got a report? Anybody got a report of what God has done? Anybody have a report of how God has done it? Anybody has a report of the results of what God has done? Give me a report. Give, give, just give me a report. And, and recognize the fact that it's Jesus and Jesus alone is the one who can save us. He's the one who can keep us. Salvation is one time and one time only. You can't lose this salvation because you didn't do anything to get it but believe him. People say, well, if a murderer was saved, well, can he, can he go to heaven? If he's saved, he goes to heaven. Well, what if he committed the murder after he was saved? If he's saved, he goes to heaven. You see, in our unsanctified imagination, we can't see that. But we serve a great God. We serve a merciful God. We serve a gracious God who allows us time with him. And he gives us opportunity to get to know him. And once we receive him, we're saved. Jesus says in John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30, John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30, that once you're in my hand, no man can pluck them out. He said, if you, if, you were, if you were a part of me, you wouldn't have left me. You can't leave me. And once you're in my hand, no man, not even the devil in hell, can pluck you out. Isn't that good news? And that is good news. Now, that doesn't mean that we run a mark <laughs> because we're saved. Because sanctification is still out there. And so when you live a set apart, sanctified life, what happens is that we make sure as we walk with God, God rewards us for living a sanctified life. Today's message is that everybody can get to know him. The wino can get to know him. The, the, drug, drug, the drug dealer can get to know him. The dope dealer can get to know him. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, the prostitute can get to know him. The homosexual, the lesbian can get to know him. If you get to know Jesus and trust the story, if you just trust the story, that's why every single time we speak, we ought to tell people about his death, burial, and his resurrection. His name is Jesus. That is good news, isn't it? That's good news. That is, that is good news. Anybody else? Nothing? Either I did a horrible job or the Lord spoke. Now, what you do? <laughs> so, I want to thank Brother Miles and Brother, Brother Whitlock for allowing me to stand where they stand uh, every Sunday and uh, deliver this word. Thank you so much. Let's go to God. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father, for who you are and for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that salvation is for all of us. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to walk in sanctification. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are, it is offering time here in the church, and those of you who want to give to the New Beginning Church, you can do so by giving to the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459, 77459. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. And if you have not received Jesus Christ, this is your moment. You can do that right now. The story today is that everybody can receive him. You can receive him right where you are right now. Just bow your head and repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. 
and make me a new person. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Again, thank you so much. Come and visit us for our 1030 service every Sunday here at the New Beginning Church. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.